Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Climatic Solution Showcase, the home of big solutions for some of Asia's biggest challenges. Once again, a leading company based in Asia will be presenting their most pressing environmental issues to a panel of experts. Our five panelists are at the forefront of the rapidly changing solutions from around the world. If there's a new tech, innovative startup, or game-changing business model, then they will know about it. This week, we're focusing on cooling and energy conservation. And who better to discuss these important subjects than Harleen Oberoi from Tata Realty. The Tata Group is made up of 100 different companies with a market capitalization of 350 billion US dollars. In India alone, Tata Realty already has 34 million square feet of assets with another 36 million square feet currently in development. This is the company that does things on a big scale, which means any solutions will also have the potential for large scale impact across the business. Thank you for joining us, Harleen. These days, all businesses have to think about their environmental footprint. How central is the idea of sustainability to Tata Realty? All our projects in the country are green certified. Okay, so that's a policy. We will never do any project which is not green certified or which is not a green building. So that really directs all our development efforts. You know, there is an upfront investment into doing a green building. So there's an initial cost which we have, but we have really realized that over a period of time, that incremental cost is, you know, paid back very nicely by a building, you know, in terms of energy efficiency, energy absorption, consumptions, et cetera. So uh, we are very convinced by 2030, almost 40% of Indian population going to be living in cities. If we are not cautious about energy efficient green building, then, uh, you know, we are going to land up in a bigger mess. Yes, definitely. This rapid urbanization makes the need for workable solutions even more urgent in India. So given that, which technologies or processes do you currently use to make developments more energy efficient? Right from the initial stages, when we do, you know, energy modeling, we have various software which helps us, you know, in the computational design. Because India is a very diverse country and, you know, variation in temperatures across uh, the regions vary hugely. So it's not that one shoe will fit all sizes. So uh, right from the design stage, uh, computational dynamics about, you know, we use softwares, uh, looking specifically at the coefficients of heat gains about the building, the shading pattern, the sun travel path, uh, you know, the windward or the other alignments of the building. These are factors which are very, very critical right at the design stage itself. The next stage is selection of the materials, which is very, very important. So we have chosen materials like EIFS, etc., which is insulation material, which we are used uh, in elevations of the building, which basically is an EPS form, where which we use an external building so that the heat gain inside the building is less. What that means is if the building is not gaining heat, you will have less of air conditioning requirement. If you have less of air conditioning requirement, you'll spend less money there. Okay, you save on the energy. Uh, we ensure or we, you know, by preference, make a choice of, you know, going towards uh, producers of energy, which are renewable. That's great. That's great. I think it's great that lowering energy consumption is now considered throughout the construction process. So then the next question is, how do you pass these savings on to your customers? If the resident is an occupant of uh, a commercial space with us, he is, you know, all the every month and month, he's bogged down by something which is called CAM charges. Okay, so common area maintenance charges, which is a substantial cost. So we have a uh, large IT park in Chennai, in Ramajiv IT park, one of our developments, 10 million square feet of development. There we had decided to source our power requirement from, you know, an alternate source, and which is solar in this case. So the power which a service provider has been providing to me let's say at 10 rupees a unit, the solar power is available to me at six rupees. You can straight away say 40% of difference in you know, the supply of the power to that large IT park. So any of these installations which we have in our IT parks, you know, if we give them the benefit of these reduction in CAM charges, we become the most preferred choice of destination. Okay, so what I'm hearing is the business, the customer and the environment all benefit and that's great but you obviously feel there's more you can do. What are your biggest challenges when you're trying to implement even more sustainable cooling solutions? So my biggest challenge is access to information on sustainable cooling products. 
my access to those information is very limited. So this needs a really good solution out there. Second is uh, a common platform of aggregators. So innovators, designers, material producers, etc. You know, we need to have a common platform. So one can go and, you know, scout for, you know, all such requirements. Third is uh, we really build, we need to build up a local ecosystem in terms of regulatory requirements and mechanisms. So this is another challenge we have. Okay, so it's clear you understand your pain points and you've touched upon some of the solutions you'd like to find. Can you also describe your cooling and energy saving wish list for our panel? Yes, yeah, so uh, Lynn, I, as I was sharing with you, you know, whenever we are, you know, aware about a new technology globally anywhere, and we try to embrace and bring that technology to our products, uh, our projects in India, there are, you know, various challenges we have. Okay, so one is access to information on, you know, sustainable or cooling products. So there is a limited uh, information available. And that really doesn't help the cause because uh, uh, then it takes us a lot of time to, you know, scout, source, etc. and all. You know, if you frankly ask me, I in my wish list, I always uh, say if you have a common platform, you know, which can act as an aggregator with information on technology system, etc. and all, then uh, products and energy, etc. everything is available there. It makes life much simpler and easier, you know, to uh, ascertain these facts before we plan, uh, you know, using this. Now, what is my wish list? You know, we need, really need to have adaptive cooling technology, okay? So we have been doing some experiments with radiant cooling, renewables, et cetera, but we need to have a very good, uh, you know, adaptive cooling technology. And uh, also one thing is that financial business model, uh, you know, and the future I see is, you know, for business is, Offering uh, cooling as a service. There is a cooling concept called district cooling. Okay, there's a centralized plant and then there's a distribution network. And you are metered uh, for you the chill water which you consume uh, through the BTU system and then you pay for it. That is a very different business model which really makes sense. And for a large, uh, you know, cities with such huge population, I think it will make a drastic change, uh, both in climate towards the climate and ambience out there. Yes, definitely. That last point, Harleen, is the most striking. If we don't find solutions to these issues, then the knock-on effects to climate and people's way of life could be huge, not to mention the negative impact on businesses. So with that in mind, I think it's a good time to bring in today's panel. Joining us today are Navarun Atraya, Chi Yong Chow, Arjun Gupta, Danny Kennedy, and Karthi Chandrasekhar. Thank you for being here, everyone. As you saw, Harleen has some interesting issues that need your attention. I look forward to hearing what you have in store for him. Navaroon is up first. He is a Senior Investment Analyst at Plug and Play Asia Pacific. Navaroon, the floor is all yours. Thanks, Lynn. Um, great to be here uh, for a second time. While we are dealing with uh, different technologies, different startups, and um, also our collaborations with multiple corporate partners, um, trying to um, solve their issues internally, we've come across quite a wide spectrum of solutions. We have a startup uh, which is called Chi Square from Singapore. And basically for Chi Square, um, what they have uh, been focusing on is how do they create a high performance digital twin, which will allow them to simulate model and use machine learning to actually understand the operations of a building and uh, to better promote energy efficiency, right? Now, in this regard, what they have is two different solutions. So the first part is basically a virtual audit. So the virtual audit, basically what it, what it does, it does an energy performance assessment for the buildings uh, based on 3D models and energy simulation. And this can result in about 30 to 50% savings of energy um, in the buildings. Apart from this, what they have also expanded on is basically this platform. It's a digital twin platform called Better Life. Now, what this enables you, you to do is to map out an entire ecosystem of buildings. They also have a marketplace which gives you access to all the different solutions. So let's say they recommend you a certain solution to make changes in your energy efficiency. You can actually access the marketplace and their certified vendors where you go in and, and tap into these vendors and get access to those solutions, right? Um, apart from this, we can finally go into the data analytics part of things. There's this startup called Sapient, and what they have is basically an intelligent plug load system. 
So they helped um, Simply Energy's customers to actually save energy. So what they do is um, they provide more insight on how different appliances are using energy on a day-to-day basis. And then this information provides the insight into what can be done to actually save energy over time in a particular setting. So, so these are a few things that, that we have seen in the past. These are success stories that we've had in the past. Thanks, Navaroon. Thank you for that broad selection of ideas. Harleen, what do you think? Tata is a large company. Could you potentially use all of these ideas? Absolutely, absolutely. And then Navaroon, uh, you know, many of the points which you picked up is something which we are, you know, at this moment, role playing to find solutions. And uh, again, I reiterate because I mentioned this in my, uh, you know, wish list also that access to information of these developments is something which is Either it comes too late for us by the time we have, you know, moved on from the design stages. And uh, so that's our challenge. And also uh, my requirement that all the systems that you mentioned about IoT devices and other things, they need to be very harmonized and working on a common platform. Yeah. Okay. I cannot have multiple systems because it creates its own set of, you know, unique challenges for us. So integrating these systems is the need of the hour. And that's something which we are really day in and out working, trying to find solutions. No, uh, I absolutely agree. I mean, access to the information for these solutions at the right time. And then again, uh, like you mentioned, uh, making everything centralized and organizations like Plug and Play, our primary uh, approach towards uh, creating more value is to make sure that you have access to these solutions at the right time and, and very seamlessly. So, so I think that's where we come in. That's an interesting point you make, Arlene, about the integration between the different systems. And I think this industry is so new and there's so many startups that offer different solutions to different needs, but there are no systems integrators to oversee everything. Right? You essentially need an ERP for green technologies. Uh, yes, so Lynn. yes that's, that's where the bigger challenge is because the larger manufacturers, be you, you name it, like Toshiba and Hyundai's of the world, they are taking you know, a good amount of time finding solutions. They are into research mode, whereas the need is immediate. And we have found this need being addressed by you know, uh, new startups, which are very fast, very agile, providing solutions. But the pain point is there's no common integration or you know, a platform where this is together for me. So that's where we are. Speaking of fast and agile solutions, Arjun, I wonder if that's something that Smart Jewels would consider doing, or is that a little too far outside of your mission right now? Yeah, thank you, Lynn. Uh, I think that's an excellent question for me to come in on. Uh, you know, uh, so I represent Smart Jewels. Uh, we have our own IoT platform technology called DJewel. And all the new IoT platform technologies, I would say today, are built with an open architecture. Okay, so what that means is that they can take in information from any existing building management system or any other database. And they can also export information to any other building management system or database. And in the middle, while taking in information and spitting out information, it does its magic in optimizing energy use. One of the challenges that uh, I agree with Mr. Harleen is that some of the legacy systems, like you know, if you go to a Honeywell or if you go to a Schneider or a Siemens, they may be running a proprietary protocol on their own part of the building management system. And then, you know, this is where a person like Mr. Harleen becomes extremely important. Uh, if he, because he's the owner of the building, right? So if he tells his legacy system providers that you need to open up your systems and allow them to integrate with other systems, then there are standard industry communication protocols like BACnet over which any IoT system can integrate with an existing automation system. So I think, uh, you know, the challenge here is one of collaboration and cooperation rather than technical. And we have done this, in fact, in some of the buildings uh, that we work with. Now, uh, I'd like to respond to Mr. Aline's uh, challenge that he's thrown out to us. So as I understand it, you know, there are a few elements of this challenge. One is that he wants his buildings to be dynamically managed. Second is that he wants all his information available on a single platform, which is what we just discussed. And then third uh, is that he wants low cost cooling system, right? Low energy, low cost, high sustainability, uh, cooling system. And then the fourth is that there are a lot of technologies and you know it, it becomes a little challenging to go after 100 technologies. So we are an energy management company and our job day to day is to actually deliver the lowest cost of cooling for large campuses. So we are currently managing more than 40 buildings across India 
where we have already implemented, designed, implemented, and we are managing cooling optimization projects. So what this means is that we have minute by minute information on each of these buildings, on each equipment's energy consumption profile. So when you go for a cooling as a service proposition, the advantage that a person like Mr. Harleen has, he can throw out a challenge and say, I want, you know, who can give me the lowest TR per square foot for this new facility that I'm coming up with? And then who can give me the lowest KWH per TRH for a 15 year period? Right. And then just throw it out as a challenge. And then it's up to companies like ours to actually pick from all the best available technologies and bring them to Mr. Helene, because all he cares about at the end of the day is these two numbers. Right. So that's where something like cooling as a service and what we do actually comes in. So uh, thank you, Arjun. And uh, good to hear from you. There are a couple of things. So as a developer for commercial spaces, IT park, large IT parks, we have a vision and a mission statement that come 2025, we are going to be having a portfolio of 25 to 30 million square feet of lease out space. Okay, that's a very ambitious uh, target. <clears throat> and the next subsequent uh, plan of action is that we'll go for REIT listing after that. So moment once we go to a REIT, it becomes all the more important for me to maximize returns of the investors in our commercial spaces. But the need is to sustain that over a period of time. We really need to have systems where it needs minimum or, you know, an energy uh, requirement and the costs are very uh, much contained. Thanks, Arjun. I'd also like to hear from Danny. Danny, as the Chief Energy Officer of New Energy Nexus, I understand you also have some experience in this area. Can you talk about your thoughts on the pay-as-you-save business model? Sure, and thanks for having me. It's it's sort of fun to follow on plug-and-play and smart <laughs> tools. And I agree with a lot of what's been said, so I don't want to rehash that. I, I think, you know, to Arjun's point, the cooling as a service business model aligns the incentives right, makes it such that the entrepreneur is delivering this sort of integrated, seamless service to the end user, the customer, against the things that they care about, which are cost and, and energy consumption. And so, you know, that, that's how to, to make it work. With Harlan's questions and, and the sort of challenges we were faced with, I don't want to rattle off the, you know, sort of dozens of individual companies or technologies that we've seen in portfolios that are trying to implement these contracts, but rather sort of talk about how to expose Tata Group and, and you know, other folk to those from outside of India into India and vice versa. You know, we've recently had great success bringing um, a Malaysian boiler control company to Manhattan. But I think one of the key things for us to get better and to accelerate the adoption of these efficiency uh, technologies and improve the built environment performance is going to be sharing and cross fertilization between the sort of programs and the portfolios and if there's a better mousetrap in one market, let's make sure that it spreads quickly to the next and, and using open innovation ecosystem strategies and, and making sure that they're all, um, as Arjun was saying, fairly open sourced is, is critical to that as well across markets. So um, we try to make that knowledge available. Our clean fight program in New York is probably the most applicable. Harlan landlords, building owners and REITs are all, you know, really lapping up the services and products being offered by the startups because they are meeting these sorts of goals to pay as you save and, and reduce cost of energy at the same time. Thanks, Danny. That's really interesting to hear what's going on in the U.S. Now let's explore an Asian perspective. Chi Young, in your role with ADB Ventures, can you tell us some of the solutions that you think will be helpful for Harleen's needs? Sure. So, so Harleen, you mentioned something about, you mentioned the aggregator of uh, uh, information and the technology. You mentioned the platform several times. But build down, build down what like uh, others already shared. I like to share three example companies I have, you know, I have talked to. So, for example, one group of uh, uh, people who, with international experience and focus on green and the low carbon solutions. So basically from, from their point of view, they're looking at as a whole life cycle of the building, like from the design, construction, operation, you know, from the whole uh, holistic view, they're thinking about the, how to integrate all the new materials and the new technology into, you know, into the whole picture. So, so to me, this is a very good bridge for people, like for organization like you guys. And then and another one company is actually a subsidiary company and they're a, a top 
uh, land development company in China. It focuses on green building technologies. So basically, they also integrated. First of all, they, they innovated, invented a lot of technology internal, but they also incorporated all the other, you know, interesting technology startups into the system. And they de designed total solutions. So for example, they have very clear, uh, you know, service package for commercial building, for residential house, for factory, for school, that kind of thing. So from there, you can, because they already, I think they are keep like doing pilot test and using to the commercialization stage. And they also keep bring using in. And then they can share with their customer who are the, you know, the large real estate company or land developer. So, so that's another form of the bridge. And another one is talking about tax scouting. I think Plug Play and the new and Nexus are so good at like scout good technology all over the world. But I do see, uh, a slightly different format. Uh, you probably, I don't know whether people heard about the Sky City Challenge, which is actually hosted by a Chinese company, Broad Group. So Broad Group every year, they throw out like an uh, international uh, open innovation challenge is called the Sky City. So every year they gave out a question. Okay, I want all like people, the designer, architecture, tech innovator, you can help me solve this problem. So I felt like uh, Tata can get definitely work with uh, Plug Play, can work with New Energy Nexus to help do the tech scouting and the evaluation. But uh, but I think uh, you guys can also think about how to even like be a little bit more proactive, like uh, to 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 call on the innovators all in the world. So so yeah, that's a, that's a, like a real cases I saw from China. Yes, in agreement there. But uh, let me also share with you at Tata's we are. Tata is a conglomerate of 100 group companies and represented in 100 countries. So yeah. let me assure you that we have a very beautiful internal ecosystem of, you know, innovation and we are still running short of solutions. Okay. So every day, every design we bring on the board, there are requirements. So you mentioned this, maybe we should be uh, in a position or we should stitch it better with global uh, innovators, startups, so that there is less of time to incubate a design, and and you know we we cut short the development life cycle of a project. A quick question: I know like you have been doing so great actually on the ecosystem side. I wonder like whether there are very clear mechanism to help them to do the force the POC force the pilot project inside the the, the group. Absolutely, I will share with you a case study. So there was a startup company from uh, Delhi, Bright Young Engineers, and they had developed a heat exchanger. A major contributor of pollution in the cities is uh, diesel generator sets. And it removes the particulate emission of 2.5 or particulate 2.10 by as high as 70% or 80%. Now, this startup, we piloted with them. We installed one such uh, you know, installation in one of our projects in Gurugram, and it yielded fantastic results. However, the DG set manufacturers or suppliers, they were not willing to buy this technology for reasons best known to them. So we came to the support of this startup and I personally wrote to these DG set manufacturers like Cummins and many other that if you do not have this, not specifically this, but if you do not have a particulate emission control system in your DGs, we are not going to buy from you. So that really led to a different solution now. And now it has been made mandatory by government also. So it is a must to have. So this is the, you know, uh, walk the type, walk the talk kind of conduct we have here. That's really interesting. One of the biggest challenges for startups is getting access, right? Access to suppliers, access to customers. And with Tata, not only are you the customer, but you also act as a champion for the new technology. Right? This is a role I know most funds also try to fill. Karthik, as founder of Sangnam Ventures, what's been your approach to helping startups get the access they need to continue to grow? The, the opportunity when we started off and we were looking at it from the kind of the broader market, which is kind of mostly unorganized, uh, our focus was more on the MSMEs uh, and where we can make an impact. And so more, a lot of the work that we did in cooling was around low-grade waste heat recovery, uh, around uh, basically thermal storage solutions, which kind of works both with industry and commercial customers. And the idea was, hey, you know, the commercial customers have capital available 
to deploy and they have access to markets, right? Um, and and what we learned was while there are you know the companies we had invested in were <clears> advanced <throat> in terms of technology or bringing new technology to the market, they were working with industries which have like big engineering teams, right? And their engineering teams are designed to work with a variety of technologies. Plus, uh, you know, they want the best in class for each solution, right? They don't want something that's uniform. So what happens in, you know, the commercial building space is you want uniformity, you want like basically smoothness, right? And that's something that they don't want to kind of give the hassle of. And that I think was the learning for us to kind of support Arjun and Smart Juice in saying you need somebody who brings things together, right? So what, what that means is Arjun and Smajus then become like a platform to bring new technologies as well, right? So 80% of their business might be off the shelf components, adding in more around the software, the integration, the smoothness uh, that Harleen wants, uh, but then also have the opportunity to bring in new technology, provide data and feedback about new technology, and then build it forward, right? So that was kind of uh, the other bit you know, I think two out of three buildings that, that are going to stand in India in 2030 haven't been built, right? So you're talking about like a massive opportunity of bringing new buildings online. And what you're going to have is like a lot of the real estate developers, especially the, you know, the likes of Tata, are going to end up being almost like utilities where they are providing the overall comfort for the people living, working in these spaces. Uh, and then, you know, there are so many other things that you can bring in. And I think the energy platform, the cooling platform is a great place to start because it's the hardest platform. But I think if you do the hard part first, then the opportunity to bring on other technologies becomes really understanding where the evolution might be in terms of what Tata reality might look like five years from now, and then kind of building the ecosystem and building startups that basically grow with them is, I think, the most interesting thing to see. Okay, great. Danny, I'm going to bring you back in on this. Does this new vision of a, what a property developer could be resonate with you? Well, I, I'm loving how Karthik's sort of making a Tata group or equivalent commercial building owner and manager a kind of aggregator of aggregators. You know, you have this opportunity to provide cooling as a service, charging as a service as the electric mobility rolls into the garage in the basement of the building, all these services that are valued by the inhabitants of those buildings and they come to pay and rely on uh, the building manager to provide them. So, you know, this, this need for not knowing each individual technology solve, whether in a retrofit setting or a new build setting, but rather how to make them all interoperable and seamlessly serve the customer better, cheaper, with less energy consumed, and then and joining that to these other related systems, you know, this future of the building owner as the utility provider and not just the utility of electricity, but mobility services and, and many other things in our lives. I think that's kind of a, a really exciting renaissance. You know, landlords might feel like they're sitting on old building stock that, you know, might get a fresh a bit of fresh paint or something or other, but actually they're sitting on a a gold mine of service business opportunities to offer to people as well as achieving our decarbonization goals. A new renaissance, that sounds very exciting. And it sounds like Harleen and Tata also share the same perspective. Harleen, I'd like to get your thoughts on the ideas that our panel discussed today. Do you think they were helpful and have you heard some ideas that you could move forward with? Yes, uh, I am. Uh, uh, this is very encouraging and I, uh, eye opener also. So you have brought together, uh, you know, participants from very different profiles. So I, uh, I have a better idea now, you know, because the commitment, again, as I said, uh, from the group, from the chairman to my MD to me is all same. The belief is very strong and uh, we are on a very accelerated mode of development. And we need this. We need partners. We need uh, solution providers. We need uh, advisors. I think the best opportunity uh, that you've provided, Harleen, is the problem statements, right? I think uh, that's the starting point for almost, uh, you know, startups, acceleration programs, everything else, right? Like understanding your needs uh, are the biggest uh, aspects.
Thanks, Karthik. This is a conversation that could keep going and going, but unfortunately, we've run out of time for today. The solutions presented to us have approached Harley's concerns from several different angles. And the key takeaway for me is the need to create an integrated ecosystem of different technologies, which can be delivered to customers using innovative business models, such as pay as you save. It's the accumulation of multiple technologies working together that bring eye-catching savings for businesses, customers, and the environment. It's always great to see real-world solutions that benefit everyone involved. With approaches such as these, I'm much more confident that Asia Pacific will be able to meet its climate commitments while continuing to develop for the benefit of all. Now, all that's left for me to do is to thank our panel of experts. Thank you to Navarun Atraya from Plug and Play, Arjun Gupta, founder of Smart Jewels, Danny Kennedy from New Energy Nexus, Chi Young Sao of ADB Ventures, and Karthik Chandrasekhar from Sangnam Ventures. And thanks to you for watching. Until next time on the Climatic Solution Showcase. <laughs>